What's good with it? It's your boy, Mr. Mixer, and I got my boy, Conflict, here. Yeah, yeah, we're going to get into an interview today. So what's good with you, bros? Uh, not much. Just hustling, trying to work music, be a dad at the same time. Yeah, just yeah. Just bust my ass left and right. Yeah. Working, working a lot? Like, yeah. that's what you mainly do? You just uh, do? I got two jobs. One of them's for Coca-Cola right now. I work, I work an hour, uh, average of like 50 to 60 hours a week with them. And then my second wow. job is... Uh, night shifts with Purple Cow. That's dope. Hey, is Purple Cow good? What do they serve there, bro? Hold up. What What they, do they serve? <laughs> Cause I is it, <laughs> is it any drink called Purple Cow? Uh, no, but we do have the famous Purple Milkshake. Okay, cause it's gotta be. I can see the Purple Milkshake. I yeah. thought it was a drink called the Purple Cow or something. Like nah, that. The, the reason they end up doing the whole cow thing is because it's pretty much a burger joint. Burgers, okay. I can yeah, see that. that now. We we basically have burger joint and we go off of like Elvis's time period with our music, our style of the restaurant and all that. Oh, okay. We so even like have burgers, a, fries. We even got shakes named after them and those are pretty good if you want to check those out. That's dope. <laughs> That's dope. So like burgers, fries, and shakes. Burgers, around. fries, shakes. We serve like tuna sandwiches, turkey sandwiches. I'm going to go there one day. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> hey, I go always, for it. I always just pass it up, bro. And I go, man, I'm going to just Hell, go, go up I'm to the go bar there. and I'll take care of you. Yeah. We also got alcoholic shakes, too, if y'all want to do that. Oh, snap. <laughs> Dang, they bussing, bussing. <laughs> <laughs> That's what up, bro. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So, like, you ain't in, like, boxing or anything? Or? Uh, no. Fun fact of the day. My, my sister, she's in Taekwondo. I've seen my cousins in Taekwondo before. And I asked my dad why I couldn't, <laughs> uh, like, attend to these things. Because I wanted to do boxing, and then I wanted to do, like, UFC boxing or whatever. Right. My dad said about UFC boxing, I'd get eaten alive. But he said the reason he never, like, let me be in any martial art class or whatever was because I don't know when to stop whenever I'm fighting. <laughs> I feel that. that that's... That he wasn't wrong that's a bad habit yeah i feel that <laughs> okay so no 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 no, no fighting, train no nothing. fighting nothing okay just straight rage well, you, going you could it. be a fighter you know i could you know I could. but i see why you're not yeah you know what i'm saying because <laughs> you just that's that's me yeah for I'm anybody who's going. out there and ends up being a victim i just want to say sorry because i'm unleashing all of my past plus what you pissed me off for on you yeah. So don't piss me off. Just be on my good yeah. side. We all good. I feel like you take a lot of that out in your music nowadays. Oh yeah. Well, you know, I, we've only worked. Yeah, I got a lot of anger that I yell I... at towards the mic. Yeah. Uh, next song I'm gonna be working on is dealing with. Well, it's gonna be talking about how I'm dealing with my past nonstop. Yeah. I unfortunately became. Uh, I ended up developing sleep insomnia from it and shit. Okay. So. Hey, that's yeah. real because people can relate to that, bro. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's that's what I like about your music, bro. Like I can feel the, the pain in it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I, I know it's more that, than that, that's the it's goal. more Projected than just words. It's exactly. More, right, right. So that's that's what I'm saying. I like about your music because that's what people can relate to, and that's really what music is. You want to exactly. have some emotion in it, you know? Exactly. Talk yeah. about your demons. Talk about your worries, yeah, your struggles, your happiness, all of that. Right, because it's therapy at the end of the day. Exactly. You know, once you let it out and free your mind of it, you know. Exactly. Music started to become my uh, little strategy for fighting and stuff. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Mine too, bro. It's always been my little therapy therapy session. I wish I picked that shit sooner. It used to be football. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you're going to tear your body up with that. <laughs> I did. I ended up breaking my leg and everything. Right? Okay. <laughs> Man, for the rest of your life, you're going to feel that, bro. I know. Man. That's, that's why I hate spring. Storms, they suck. Man. They suck, suck, suck. Oh, my Man. God. <laughs> it's crazy. But that's what up, bro. That's what up. Okay, so we're going to get into some real questions now. That All was right, a little introduction. All right. You know. That works. Okay. I'm good with that. Okay, cool, cool. So we're going to start out. I don't think I... I might have asked you this when I first met you, but how old are you? I'm 21. 21? Bro, you could have passed for at least 24, 25. I've maybe. been told that a few times. I honestly <laughs> thought, I, and I, I think I asked you this, but I, I don't remember you saying 21. <laughs> no, I, yeah. I, okay, but yeah, that's what I, I remember. So, the, I remember the conversation being brought up because you talked about how old you were. Yeah, and yeah. And I was like, hold up. No, there's no goddamn way. I know black don't crack and all, but Jesus. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, that's what up. You young, bro. Yeah, twenty one, man. Young and grinding, being a father, love it. Twenty one, I was, I was on the grind with the music. Hey, shit. I always been a dad, so I've been a dad since eighteen. <laughs> oh, hey, there you so, go. So yeah, I started, just, I started being just, a dad at nineteen, though. Oh, well, you, you gonna see where I'm? <laughs> a few years, you gonna be like, oh, I see how he feels. <laughs> <laughs> I see how he feels. Yeah, for real, for real. So okay, so twenty one, bro. That's yep. what up. 
All right, so your first musical experience that got you into music. Like, what was the thing? That got me into rap or, like, music altogether? Well, I think it's the same, you know, because you rap, so that's that's the music. That, that is the music. But no, the reason why I asked you that is because... Is it a two-part answer? Yeah, it, okay. it's kind of a two-part answer. Like, okay. the only things that I've been in as long as sports has been Boy Scouts and music. And, well, Boy Scouts, I, I've been in that since first grade. But yeah, music, I started out in the symphony orchestra, actually. Dope. I started playing uh, violin, and I was a scrawny kid at the time, and whatever pads we were using to help out our collarbones, whatever, that crap wasn't working for me. So I said, like, <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna go to upright bass. I did that, I fell in love with it right off the bat. Dope. And then, uh, no, it wasn't upright bass, my bad. It was cello. Eventually cello? I learned okay. upright bass. It wasn't that much of a difference, it was just bigger. Mm -hmm. But uh, did they that. They all are. Yeah, facts. Yeah. Uh, and then after all that, uh, later on in Boy Scouts, I ended up running into Deflective, and there's this one summer oh. camp that we had, and he started rapping the fast part to Rap God, and it was like clean. Yeah. Like it was very articulate and everything, and it was like no. he was taking it slow, but everything was being spit out fast. He was just feeling it the entire mm. way through, and I was like, holy shit, I want to be like that. I want to rap. So after like going through percussion and all that with band in high school, I found out that we had a music tech class. Yeah. And I was like, sweet. So I can learn about some of this stuff, figure out what to do and all that. And uh, my final push to actually trying to write and record was uh, NF and then my percussion director, Mr. Moss. Mm -hmm. he, he was, they were like, final shove and last straw to pull. That's dope. So, yeah, I got that going for me. <laughs> that's dope, bro. Hey, and that's big, too, because coming up in school with music, you know what I'm saying? Like, it shows you a lot more, you know, because it's more structure in it. Exactly. There's a lot Reading more insight music. to it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's dope, though. But you said <laughs> the upright bass and the cello. Upright bass, okay. cello, and violin. And I, I tried aren't to learn you, uh, percussionist? percussionist yep, started that in sixth grade. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's dope too. <laughs> but they really are the same, bro. Cause like I played trumpet and then I went to French horn. It was just like a few difference in the fingering. Yeah. You know it, what I'm saying? That, that's all it is. It's the fingering. And, and it the was strings. like I knew how to play the French horn after playing exactly. trumpet. You know what I'm saying? So I've always wanted to learn how to play that shit. <laughs> yeah, it's real simple, like I, bro. I, I always thought like that hand sitting in the fucking bell was the easiest part of that. Mm. But no, after hearing a few of yeah. my classmates doing, it, I'm like, mm, nah. Nah, the only thing I, that got me with those instruments is that the spit, bro. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and when you were in school, like, well, the way I came up, I didn't really own the instrument. So yeah. it was kind of nasty to be Ugh. after other people. You know what I'm saying? And so that's what I love about being a percussionist. All my stuff was hand-me-downs from older brother Josh. Right. By the way, thank you for being a percussionist before me. <laughs> <laughs> that's what up. Well, yeah, that's what up, bro, on all of that. Okay. Um, actually, we're going to take a break right quick, and we'll be right back. MrMixOfTheProducer.com, where you can find exclusive beats and exclusive drum kits. Well, well, welcome to all the producers and artists. Welcome to the community of exclusive. MrMixOfTheProducer.com. All right, y'all, we back. All right, we're going to get into some more questions. Um, so, bro, you see this, the SME merch? Uh, what I you, do, I do. Um, what you thinking? I'm, I'm gonna give you uh, some gear. Well, me, growing up as a depressed emo kid, I was always having that beanie look, like the whole long hair, getting in the eyes, all that shit. Yeah, yeah. Me but too. me, I definitely fuck with the beanies. But for people who don't, I suggest this. Yeah, yeah. This shit looks hard as hell. You only die once. I don't hear people say that shit. You will never hear that phrase until you see it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Man, because it's the, it's the other way around. You only live exactly. once. Exactly. You only live once, right. but nobody realizes you only die once, you too. You only die once. And some, like, for the religious it. believers out there, I've heard comebacks to it, and it's been top notch. I'm a religious believer, too. But for the people who say you only live once, it's false. Believers live twice. Shout out to God. Anyways. I think Drake uh, made that up. Oh, seriously? I, I think. I, he might have just coined it and made it popular, but Hell. I think I heard that from Drake. Yeah, No, I'm saying YOLO. 
you know, you only live yeah. once one. Exactly. But, but instead, it's Yo Do. Right, it's Yo Do. <laughs> I love Shout it. Shout out to Jagger Lang, aka <laughs> Joe MFN. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what up, though. But yeah, I definitely fuck with the cups. Y'all, okay. If y'all ain't into beanies, I definitely get one of these. Okay, okay. All right, so by the end of the night, you can uh, pick yourself now, bro. You know what I'm saying? When we get done and everything, we're going to get into some more questions, though. Beanie. The beanie's mine. Already. That's what <laughs> up. All right, so. What's your craziest, what's one of your craziest stories? It could be anything. It don't even gotta be music related, bro. Uh, let's see here. Just a crazy incident. Crazy incident, ooh. I've had a lot of those. <laughs> All right, well, there's one recently that uh, happened. I, I, how do I say this? It wasn't necessarily last week, but more like the week before, I guess, mm -hmm. timeline-wise, anyways. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was picking up my kids from home, and I lived out in Whittington, mm. so kind of sketchy, but really it's just because of the potheads and the crackheads that live there. It ain't right. really like full-on drive-by, shoot-by, or fucking yeah. drive-bys every day, whatever. I used to live up that way. Yeah, but uh, there was this one time I picked up my kids from my parents after a late-night shift at Purple Cow, and... There was this Dollar General across from Lakeside, and some dude randomly pulled out and started following me. I thought he was just trying to be one of those asshole drivers or whatever. So I ended up speeding up, and he was just on my tail, so I said, screw it. So I went 80 all the way down Ooh. to my place, and it turns out he was on my ass the entire time. Dang. But the redneck and papa bear in me ended up deciding to kick <laughs> in, and uh, I had my throwing knives with me. And as soon as oh, he ended up parking like two spaces over, I got out the car, I locked the door, and I threw one of my throwing knives into his hood. Oh, snap. <laughs> I said, you really think that was a fucking lucky shot? You want to find out if I got more left? And then I pulled the knife out of his hood, and I kept stabbing it over and over Ooh. and over. He got back in his car and drove off. Woo! I don't need a gun. I just need a temper. It usually intimidates and works well. Wow. Fatherhood. Yes. That is crazy, for real, bro. You probably got the number one craziest story on these interviews so far. Oh, yeah, no, my life's That's fucking nuts. crazy. <laughs> bro. <laughs> I would do some of that, but the, like, stabbing the car part, I probably wouldn't have done yeah, that. Yeah, no, that's, that's where you got to fake being psychotic and make yourself believe it. <laughs> I, I know I'm not psychotic as a person, but some of the shit that pops in my head, you got to use it. Ah. Uh... Especially hey, whenever you got your kids in the car. You got you your do pointer across, you though. Do. I exactly. Bet, hey, I bet he won't follow nobody like that again or do what he that did. Shit. You know he what ain't saying? coming to my neighborhood. I know that right, much. Right, right. That's all. <laughs> I bet he would leave your ass alone. <laughs> <laughs> That's what up, though. That's a crazy story, bro. Yeah. Okay. All right. What's your biggest fear? Mm. Biggest fear. This actually kind of relates into uh, my next song. My next song I'll end up recording. It's called Haunted by You. Uh, it's about my biological father. Uh, he's been a drug addict. He's been an alcoholic. He's been verbally and physically abusive. Mm. And my number one fear in life, even though I know I'm nothing like him, is not being the kind of father he was. You don't even really deserve the name father. That's that's not something you're given. It's something you earn. Right. But uh, there's times where I end up having a short fuse or something like that. Like I'll end up comparing myself to him, and then I'll just yeah. lose my shit. Uh, my last car that I had, whenever it was broke down or whatever, uh, I actually used it as a punching bag. And uh, there was one time I really got in my head because like, I was in a bad argument, I walked off, I started hitting shit, and then I was like, hold up, this is the exact same damn thing he did to me. And my kid right. was around to see that. Right. So I lost my shit, started punching my car, and then uh, I ended up walking about a mile downtown and yeah. back home just to cool off a little bit more. And uh, then I had people asking if I got in a wreck. Yeah. The, the, but the door was pretty bad. <laughs> but you were just taking it out on your car. Exactly. That's, that's the one Trying. difference between me and him, Man. was I use it on objects that don't actually feel something. Yeah. But you might feel, feel it later on. Now I got arthritis, and trust me, I felt that yeah. shit later on. Can't, can't beat up on yourself, bro. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That adrenaline went bye-bye quick. Yeah. <laughs> I did the same thing, bro. I had a crazy situation. Hit a doggone wall, bro. Yeah. I don't but know that, if I had broke my wrist or what, but it it was oh, fresh. I wasn't going to the hospital either. <laughs> <laughs> but you asking questions and shit like, what the fuck you do? I might have done something stupid, you know? Yeah, that's that, but, real but crazy. we ain't going to get into that. Just how you going to fix me? <laughs> <laughs> but no, nah, yeah, that's that's my biggest fear, ending up anything like my biological sperm donor. Man, that is crazy, bro. Mm-hmm. 
crazy. <laughs> <sighs> Shit I deal with on a daily in the back of my mind. Yeah, I feel that, man. Um, okay, so I'm gonna say this two ways, maybe. What artists inspire you now and I guess maybe yours, like, of all time inspire you? Like, maybe your start of rap? Like, who, who inspired like the ultimate you? ultimate inspiration and the one yeah, that keeps me yeah. going? Well, really more like who kind of like, because you know it's always an industry artist that kind of like when you're growing up, you'll study them and yeah. kind of give you the inspiration to start doing your thing. I know you said it was deflective in that story that you heard him do that rap guy, but yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, but, so well, that's before, what I'm like. Before deflective, there was, uh, it was, I know a lot of people end up saying this just because he's a goat and all, but me, it was actually because of the emotion and like, Aggression he had in his voice at the time period. It was Eminem, mm -hmm. like Ooh, old, yeah, 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 yeah. old Eminem. Like yeah. whenever he first started rapping his shit, I started listening to that. Mm -hmm. And the first time I like, whenever I hear the song "Lose Yourself," Ooh, yeah. like Eight Mile triggers in my head, mm -hmm. and it's immediately my life before the whole foster homes and then the adoption mm -hmm. and all that. So yeah, Eminem is a good it, reference. Exactly. So whenever he ends up talking about how much he hates his stepdad, the mm -hmm. shit life he lived in a trailer park and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Me personally, I lived in every single mo uh, motel and hotel that's right across from each other on Central, right past the track. I mm. lived in every single one of them. Wow, that's crazy, bro. Yeah. And uh, Ooh. yeah, that the for me, it's yeah, yeah, the way I grew up, the way Eminem talked about it and shit. That that was like. It was something I felt like I had to study because I related to it so much. Yeah. That's dope. Yeah. That's dope. I feel like when we grow up like that, because I ain't grow up with a lot either, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. I feel like that kind of make us into something. Exactly. You know what I'm Especially yeah. not being too privileged, because exactly. you ain't going to know nothing being privileged. You ain't going to have experience, you know what I'm saying? One thing I end up like thinking about a lot, granted, it is from Disney. It's Aladdin. Uh, being yeah, the yeah. diamond in the rough. Mm -hmm. But whenever you think about diamonds, you got to think about how they were nothing but dirt and coal and yeah. how they are nonstop right. under pressure dealing with bullshit the entire time. And right. then you form into something great. Um, that's how I look at it. That's, that's exactly it. Bro. You take all the you, bullshit and make yourself something out of it. Right. The failures make the success of, exactly. of who you are. <laughs> Hell, of quote whatever. From Juice World. It's funny how the blessed ones have the most curses. Man. There you go. Facts. <laughs> Facts. But yeah, that's what up. Okay. All right. So, um, two words that describe you. Mm. Hard one, ain't it? Oh, God damn. I'm, trying, I'm doing this with everybody, bro. <laughs> two words that describe you. Well, one, okay. father. Okay. And then another one would be... Mm. Think for a second. We got time. Let's see here. I'd say untapped. Okay. If you really think about it, like everybody uses untapped. music as an outlet and stuff. Me, I have, like granted, I've used a lot of anger and shit, but I haven't used it to my full potential until I'm actually in a studio. So it's like all that shit is untapping over and over and over until it's finally out. Right. Okay. But I'm a father I, I can, before anything, so. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's a good word, untapped. Uh, but you got to tap into it more, though. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> I definitely do. Yeah, that's, that's what I think. You make beats, too, don't you? I do. I do. Uh, okay. After that whole music tech thing, uh, I ended up trying to look up, like, the easiest way and cheapest way to set up your studio. Because at the time, I was only working at Purple Cow. Mm -hmm. So you wasn't making jack shit. Anyways, <laughs> uh, I ended up looking up on YouTube how to make... Uh, like your own stuff or whatever right. like Lakeside they have their fine arts center and they have mm. upstairs literally every single room filled up with its own like MacBook Pro a monitor all you know what shit. you know what bro I, I graduated from Lakeside but when I was there we didn't have none of that <laughs> bro I swear we didn't have none of that we didn't and I'm mad about that because now everybody is like... Bro, the amount of stuff they added just after the two years of me graduating kind of pissed me off. And I knew I was blessed with all the stuff that I had, but after all the upgrades and stuff they've been bringing in, whether it takes off... That's how I feel about my son, man, because he up at the junior high now, about to be at the high school, and I'm like, this is nice, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> exactly, like this, this... Okay, I don't... 
that used to rot. That oh, okay, right, that's that, really nice. I like right, that. Why, why didn't we have this? <laughs> tore, no, that building's still there, but that ain't the school no more. It's like a gym now. <laughs> so, oh yeah, you're talking about that uh, the gym at the end of the building. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that I know used what you're to be the school. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, that's Dang. when I was going there. You know, but. I'm just saying, technology didn't got good though. I'm just mad that yeah. I didn't experience all of this. <laughs> because if I was recording up at the school, like I would, I would know, I would have been so much far, more far ahead, I guess. That because you I, really would. I, yeah, I started learning on my own, though, in school, but I would have been that more, much far ahead. I think. That shit, yeah. That's that's, that's the crazy. only thing that's really gotten me to the crappy level that I am now. Because granted, I I might like have a. Uh, huge like grasp on music and I mm -hmm. have a giant passion for it and a drive but whew, oh, that <laughs> tasted funny <laughs> anyways uh, I I never really had like the full on skill set to yeah. like necessarily record things mm -hmm. because I mean at the end of the day like again I learned bass clef from cello and upright bass mm -hmm. like that was my root in music mm -hmm. musical notes not rhythm right. So every time I was seeing treble clef and percussion, I was like, okay, let's avoid the bell kit. Let's just get on something simple like a bass <laughs> drum and things like that. And granted, mm -hmm. I was a guy who ended up doing bare minimum to get by. Granted, I was a smart kid. My mom told me that left and right nonstop, but I always acted like I was a lug nut <laughs> just because I didn't like want to be looked at as the nerd or whatever. I wanted to be that person who was intimidated mm -hmm. just so they would mainly leave my brother alone. But also yeah, so people that. would leave me alone too. Like yeah. I, I wouldn't have people second guessing me and stuff like that. Right, trying but, you. Exactly. Yeah. But uh, after all that music tech stuff showed up and I took the classes, I tried learning how like was the best way to set up because I had a loud house. I was in a house of eight people. So it was not stock loud. Boy. Yeah, we most of us are adopted, but yeah. that it's it's a family regardless. It ain't mm -hmm. it ain't about the blood, right? But uh, after trying to figure out how to like put mats up on the wall and stuff, and mm -hmm. like make sure things were sounding perfect, being in a square room and all that, yeah, like I ended up finding all of it. And as soon as my mom found out, she was like, "No, you ain't doing that. You're about to go to college. You're getting you a full blown laptop. I don't. It, it can have your music on it if you want, but." You're getting a full-blown laptop. Yeah. By the time I was done budgeting and had everything set to like the cheapest and best at the same time, mm -hmm. I was only going to be spending 700 bucks on everything that I needed, including speakers. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I That's ended up bad. spending way more, 1400 on a laptop in a case. Yeah, I understand that. One. And that was before the mic. Yeah. <laughs> no mic. You're gonna be using the mic on the. Exactly. On the little hole. Exactly. <laughs> and then I plug in the headphones and use the mic that's with that. Right, right. We ain't, yeah. we ain't trying to do that though, but I done been down that road. <laughs> yeah, that, that's how I started originally. But yeah. That's how I started on a laptop. And I would literally put my face down to the where the mic was. That's how oh, I Oh, for real? Yeah, my Damn. first. Before I got my karaoke mic when I was like 14, something like that. When I started recording, you know, trying to <laughs> do my own thing, you know. I got you, I got you. I understand you, you man. But, Hell, yeah. every project that I had in that music tech class, like, we, we were learning how to make sound effects, ads, like, making reverb, mm -hmm. or making reverbs, like, go drastic or just very mm -hmm. subtle enough. And yeah. then, like, making it sound like you're very far away or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, whenever it came to yes, one project that was, like, telling a story or whatever, like, it, it was, you you got to come up with the story or whatever. I think right. it was, like, supposed to be Halloween-themed or something like that, but mm -hmm. you came out with the outline. Me, I decided to rap about every single project that there was. Mm -hmm. Like, I just nonstop tried rapping it, and Mr. Moss was like, you know what, I appreciate your love and passion for music and all, but you don't have to rap everything. <laughs> I was like, I know. <laughs> but it's but fun. I like it. I, I I really like it. Yeah. But yeah. That's messed up of him that he said that. <laughs> That's that is. Well, messed that was up. that was the one year I actually wasn't on his bad side though because I was the class clown and the class rebel at the same time, oh, okay. especially with him. Well. But that one year specifically, that was whenever actually that was the year I broke my leg and said, Ooh. all right, sports is no longer for me, so I'm a stick strictly to music. Right. Granted, right. kind of late at the time to pick that as your passion, but you you deal with what you got. Right. But uh, after I started like getting more into music, he started noticing it and stuff. Event, uh, our senior concert or whatever, he ended up giving me like most improved percussionist out of the seniors or something like that. That's dope. That's dope. Yeah, I, I was very shocked by it because, again, 
most hated. One of them. Probably not the top, but one of them. I know for sure. He hated you. Good. <laughs> uh, he was just annoyed with me and wouldn't say anything. Yeah. I couldn't be a teacher, though, boy. That'd be hard. But it, just, it just depends on how you go about things. Like, yeah. But all, I'm just saying all them egos, man. All them emotions and kids. Yeah. That, and, yeah. You know, it's just too many. Especially and, at the beginning of the year, you got to figure out the emotions. Every exactly. year, every year, I got to do this. Every, I gotta start yeah, that's over. why I wouldn't be doing it in high school. <laughs> I'd, I'd be doing with the elementary kids or something like that because they're easy to control. Granted, they're crazy and all, but you start playing along, yeah. they start respecting you more. You right. right. <laughs> all right, well, we're going to take one more break, and we'll be right back. What's good with it? It's your boy, Mr. Mixer. Hey. You need a dope, you need engineer. A dope engineer. engineer? Mr. Mixer is your guy. guy. Straight into it, full time with it. All right? All right. SME Studios, hit me up. 501 881 1826. Let's work. Yeah, yeah. Thought it was a game. You are now rocking with Mr. Mixer. Yeah, yeah. All right, everybody, we back. Let's get back into some of these questions, all right? All right, so what's your favorite song you've made? Favorite song I've made? Yeah. As far as, like, working with you or, like, ever? Ever. Mm. And working with me. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now, confidence-wise in my music, because I wasn't confident in my music until I started working with him. Okay, okay. Uh, my favorite song, right now I've only well, got two out, but I think my favorite song is going to end up being Haunted by You. I haven't recorded it yet, but I feel like that will end up being my favorite. But until that, uh, definitely mixed up. That I, just I dropped. I was gonna say that. Yeah. Uh, that that song I love very much. I, I was actually able to yell at a mic and not damage it. <laughs> uh, I I've never really had any luck with that, so definitely appreciate his equipment for that. Yeah. Um, but that that that's my favorite, especially with confidence. Now, with the songs that I made whenever I was in junior high and a little bit of my freshman year in college, yeah, uh, that was whenever I was trying to be a religious artist and Dope. still depressing kind of at the same time. Kind of like an NF thing, but mm -hmm. uh, that song was called Why or Why God? It was by Elijah, The Conflict at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that one was, that song was mainly questioning why on earth do you let all this bad crap happen to me, either just for the color of my skin or let this past haunt me left and right? Yeah. And why why do I have to be the one carrying the burden? Like I thought that's that deep. was supposed to be you carrying it for me. Facts. That's a that's a deep one right there, that, bro. That that's that that's, that's that's emotionally deep. speaking, that that one would probably be my favorite. Okay, okay. But yeah, I got a lot of baggage, y'all. Well, I'm gonna, have, I'm gonna have to hear that one, bro. You got it on Spotify? No, this Not was yet. before I found out about Spotify, actually. Okay. Well, you and I ain't, I ain't uploading that one to Spotify. I'm gonna remake it with <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah, I was gonna say, we yeah. either might need to retouch it or, you know, figure it out. Yeah, remake the whole damn thing. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's cool, though. But I feel like that's one I need to... You Voice know. sounded bad. Nah. We put a little more time into it. Yeah, you know exactly. I mean? It needs way more time into it. Yeah, yeah. I got the basic gist of it, but... That's really the key to music, bro. Time. You know? that, yeah, facts. Literally, the slower you go, the faster you go. Does that make sense? Actually, yeah, that does. I never thought about because, it like that. Words of you wisdom know, from Nixa over here. Yeah, that's what I'm trying <laughs> to show you. Like, don't always rush it. Like, going slower is really more detailed. Especially focusing, you know, you focus yeah. on the certain you, parts. You you know? on, focus Some on people everything. just rush through songs and it's like you don't really focus on certain details of the nuances of things going on exactly. in the song. So you don't get the same vibe and feel and emotion right. and stuff out of it. Yeah, mm -hmm. it don't feel as real. It feels just rushed, literally yeah. rushed. <laughs> but I, I ain't saying you have that. I'm just saying in general, especially gems for everybody else. Oh, too. no, I'm going to be real about it. I rush the shit out of my music. Yeah. Like, and that's that, and I feel like when you come to me, that's that's what you get. You know, I'm going to slow you down a little bit. Oh, yeah, you slow my ass down quite a bit. Right. <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. If, if you get that quality in you, when you make your own, on your own time, yeah. you'll see going slower. It's a lot more efficient and productive. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, that's what up, though. You're getting deep today, bro. <laughs> okay, so... Um, I feel like this question I'm about to ask, I've, you already answered in a way. <laughs> All right, so. I have a habit of doing that. Any sports? Uh, no, okay, let me ask it like this. Okay, so uh, football or basketball? Ooh. I would say basketball, but I quit basketball my freshman year because my temper was getting out of control, and there was one kid on the team I was about to put in the hospital. Yeah, so. So. Four. 
pain inflicted on people was encouraged in football, so I stuck yeah, to that. You said that earlier. Yeah. You said it earlier. <laughs> okay, so, um, well, I, really, that was my last question. But I was going to ask it a different way, but you kind of said it where I didn't have to ask it again. Well, no, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm, I was about a lot of sports. Really, there was one sport that I was still in. I mean, there's going to be everybody saying band aid is sport or whatever. Mm -hmm. That crap gets your heart rate going, so shut up. If you end Man, up marching and blowing through a horn and all that, you're literally having a state competition. It's a sport. Shut up. Yeah. Chess I remember, them, sport. I remember mm -hmm. them competitions, man. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. But the one uh, sport that I enjoyed more than football and basketball, actually, because like you got to hang out with people, you got to focus, you got to work on your mental work, because mm -hmm. the sport was 80% mental. 20% physical. You get mm -hmm. the mental part down, you just gotta think just a little about the physical and you're doing great. Mm -hmm. And that was with bowling. Bowling? Bowling. I'm all right in bowling, I'm all right. But that, that's the thing, like, most people will think it's just chunking it down a lane or whatever, but really, the if you're bowling with one hand, it just depends on how you twist your wrist. That's it. It ain't how you you're hold right. the ball. As long as your fingers are in the holes, you're good. But you start throwing it and you just do that, it's literally twisting a doorknob. You want mm -hmm. the doorknob straight. That's it. You're right. <laughs> That's all it takes. Yep. So you gotta do some like wrist exercises and stuff. And That's yeah. the thing. That's like, how you get good. Like, exactly. <laughs> just set the ball down and just go over like that. That's all you gotta do. Yeah. That's it. That's crazy. And it makes well, your bowling. score improve quite a bit. Okay, bowling. That, I don't know. I, I ain't been bowling in so long, bro. Neither have I. Ever, ever since my whole uh, graduation or whatever, I've bowled maybe up to five times since then. Yeah. Makes me feel really out of practice and rusty. I don't know. It's something out of our bowling alley. We used to have two of them. I don't know. I like to go to the one they tore down. <sighs> I remember that one, actually. Over there that was the track. I went, that was whenever I was going to the YMCA day camps or summer camps and stuff mm -hmm. like that. We kept going over there, and I was like, ooh, this is awesome. Yeah, that's the one I went to. Yeah, I love that one. And then after uh, Oakland took that or whatever, I was like, mm, yeah, you ruining just... our childhood. Like, what's wrong with you? I don't know. <laughs> what's Hot Springs' problem, bro? But they getting rid of everything. That's facts. Skating rink. I hope they bro, keep the bowling out here. Mm. The skating man. rink was one of my favorite places man. to go. I went there every year for my birthday. Bro. <laughs> Dude, I love skating. We grew up in the skating rink. I always <laughs> had problems because I grew up in church and my family wouldn't let me do too much of nothing. So oh, that was one of our little getaways when we could get out. We wanted to go to the skating rink. You know hey, what I'm saying? That's what's up. So barely could do that. <laughs> Couldn't even go to the lock-ins or nothing, bro. They wouldn't let us do Man. nothing as a kid. <laughs> that's, that's tough. Yeah, that's bro. That's tough. <laughs> yeah, bro. Restricted in the mug, man. I'm like, Damn. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, <laughs> live on. Okay, so <laughs> uh, where can we find you? Uh, I mean, like, contact-wise? Uh, find you, um, you know, Spotify, Oh, iTunes, okay, okay, I got you. Uh, uh IG, um, uh, what you on, Facebook, you on Facebook? Uh, I used to be on Facebook quite a bit. Uh, I'm now starting to get more into posting on Instagram, but as soon as I have something on Instagram, I go immediately to Facebook, because they're linked together. Right. And I make it to where that post is also public. Mm -hmm. But, uh, definitely on those, uh, a little more than what I used to, uh, Snapchat. My, Snapchat is like my phone number, basically. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and uh, Spotify, I'm, I now have technically two songs that I claim on there. Uh, nope. There's a third one that I'm featured in, 501 Degrees. Shit's a banger. I was featured in it. Y'all need to listen to it. Um, oh, Deflective. Yeah. Shout out to Deflective. Yes, Big sir. time. So, Thank you for being your inspiration. So what's your IG handle? Uh, oh, shit. I don't remember. I think it's... Delani underscore the conflict. Okay. Well, we're going to have all this in the description, so y'all make sure y'all click below. Yeah, don't and don't quote me on that. I'll have to look it up later. But go yeah. follow. <laughs> uh, and make sure... TikTok, too. Yeah. Because y'all in love with that shit. For I sure. I got some TikToks. Yes, I freestyled on them. Yes, they're somewhat trash, but it's okay. You only practice to get better. There you go. There you go. Yeah, you got to be on TikTok, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> exactly. Hey, the, you said the TikTok handle? Uh, the TikTok handle, I believe, is actually the same. Okay, 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 cool, cool. So we're going to have all this in the I description. I try to keep all of them the same way. I ain't got to think so much. <laughs> that's what up, that's what up. Well, we had a pretty good interview, pretty good talk. You know what I'm saying? I learned I'd something like about so. you. You know what I'm saying? That's what up, bro. And y'all know y'all can find me at MrMixOfTheProducer.com. Go check something out, you feel me? All right, well, we're going to get out this thing. You got anything to say? I just want to say, 
To all my fans and my haters, I love all of you. Haters, actually, fuck you. All right, that's about it. Uh, ready. <laughs> you, 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 you are now rocking with Mr. Mixer.